Let's look at a head-to-head -head of Vanguard Life Strategy versus Fundsmith versus a developed world tracker. So what are these products? What are their fees? What do they invest in? Advantages, disadvantages? How have they performed? And what might their outlook be like in the future? So Vanguard Life Strategy is marketed as combining multiple index funds into one fund portfolio, giving you access to thousands of shares and potentially bonds in a single investment. And it's got different numbers associated with it. So Life Strategy 100 is 100% equities, Life Strategy 20, 20% equities. Life Strategy 100 has about 25% exposure to the UK stock market, so it's overweight the UK. It's got about 8% exposure to emerging markets. And the actual fact sheet doesn't split out its exposure to individual countries or companies. So here are the holdings of the Life Strategy 100, 10 in total, US equity being the top one, and then it has been possible to get a regional breakdown of what's in the fund. So overweight UK and then possibly underweight the other um, geographies. So the performance of the whole Vanguard life strategy has been that those with the greatest weighting to equity have outperformed those with the greatest weighting to bond bonds across all time frames, 10 years, five years, three years, one year. So if that isn't a good argument to just ditch bonds, I don't know what is. And recently the higher weighted bond funds have had negative returns. So the performance of the last strategy 100 compared to the Investment Association Global Index is, well, it's reasonable. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much identical. There's just a bit of underperformance probably due to the UK overweighting um, between like, April 2020 and about April 2022. And then they come back together on this five year scale. So next up is Fundsmith. This is an active fund run by Terry Smith. It has three basic principles, buy good companies, don't overpay, and then a long-term hold, which is do nothing. Currently has 27 holdings, ongoing charges fee, just about 1%. And it invests in, well, it's basically, you can see it all there at the bottom, just the high quality companies, avoiding debt, resilient to change, um, and on good cash flows. So the top 10 holdings, Got the list there, which is, yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, preferred sectors are technology, healthcare, consumer staples, and then it avoids lots of areas like energy, mining, banking, insurance, real estate, utilities. Uh, but there's still a few companies that I think it could hold, things like Coke or Pepsi, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, and they've performed better than maybe not necessarily all that top 10, but certainly some of the things that Fundsmith has held. Performance of Fundsmith, well, it's done very well over a five year period, um, but the outperformance was mainly in historic times. And then more recently on a three and one year view, um, not quite so good. So it can depend on the time frames you're selecting as to how well it does. For a world tracker, uh, I've picked HSBC ETF HMWO. It has the largest 1,425 companies in the developed world, so no emerging markets, on a market cap weighting fees 0.15%, which is the lowest of the three. Top 10 holdings are there along with the weightings and they're all in the US. Wow, I mean, that says something about businesses in like Europe, and uh, Japan. So here's the performance, um, and it's just got the position there, but it's actually, yeah, I mean, it's an index tracker. So, so there you go, it sort of sits in the middle, really. So the advantages of Vanguard Life Strategy are, well, it's got some kind of simplicity being a fund of funds, but really it's MFI made for idiots and people who just want shortcuts in life. So why is it made for idiots? Well, the fee is 0.22%, but you could buy a Develop World X UK tracker, a FTSE UK All Share tracker, and an Emerging Markets tracker, 
in a combination and you'd have lower fees than the life strategy so it's slightly more complicated because you've got three funds instead of one but um, you know that that would actually work better and then also you can have whatever exposure you want to emerging markets you could have none or to the UK you can have 25% 5% whatever you want there's actually no logic to the UK exposure for Vanguard life strategy why is it 25% and not 20 or 15 I mean clearly that's called home country bias and they're saying well it's marketed to people in the UK and that's why they have the higher weighting so Fundsmith the advantages well, it's got some well-defined objectives. Uh, it's been around a long time and it sticks to certain sectors of the economy. And within those sectors, it buys companies with quality metrics, well, hopefully, and without overpaying. So it seems like you're kind of getting the best. That's what it likes to think. But the disadvantages, well, it's a concentrated portfolio. So that will give you volatility and if a few of the selections turn out to be duds and recently it's held PayPal for too long um, and it had Meta didn't work out very well for it then the fund will underperform and the problem is that when it underperforms investors will be tempted to sell and find something that they think is better particularly because of the fees so it's got this like active manager risk as well if the manager um, yeah just doesn't really understand what's going on in global markets then you're going to get some fairly odd selections so the developed world ETF the advantages are well it's cheap it's easy to understand and because it's market cap weighted it always has the winners but the disadvantages would be well do you think that Apple is overpriced I mean I kind of do I don't use their uh, products do you like US companies a lot um, do you want exposure to small caps or emerging markets? Well, because this doesn't have any, but if so, you can just add those in separately to your portfolio. There are other trackers that are a bit cheaper, such as LGGG for legal and general, but it didn't have the five year record and it had a wider bid offer spread, the difference between buy and sell prices. So that's why I didn't include that one. So if we look at the one year performance of all three funds then it's pretty close really uh, the blue seems to come out on top more often than not and it's never the bottom so this is the global tracker um, and then at the bottom we've got currently the life strategy um, but it's yeah there's not a lot in it really on a one-year basis three-year basis um, so here yeah the global tracker is starting to show outperformance which is interesting and then the problem would be yeah, if you bought Fundsmith here when oh yeah, it's doing well isn't Fundsmith great you might be tempted to sell here when it's gone from position number one to position number three and that's really the danger with some of these things if you don't really understand it you're probably going to throw in the towel almost right at the wrong point so a uh, five-year basis again Fundsmith just a bit ahead but if we take this forward in time who knows what will happen um, and the Vanguard life strategy a clear last but if you bought Fundsmith here then you wouldn't really be doing so well so in the future outlook and the conclusion of this video well if equity markets have subdued growth and yesterday's winners might not do so well in the future does paying a 1% product fee to Fundsmith seem like a clever thing to do and if markets are only forecast to grow by about 5% in the near term which is according to numbers from Vanguard then a 1% fee is 20% of the forecast growth of the market and that's going to be quite a drag on what's going on the concentrated portfolio of Fundsmith is more volatile and the reason it outperforms can then also become the reason it underperforms which is really things like well are technology stocks in favor and a developed world tracker I think is a better one-stop shop than life strategy and I'd advise you when you're picking your portfolio have a philosophy and stick to it and that way you'll always sleep soundly and your investments will just compound happily over time.